So, so far we have been hard coding some values, specifically our environment variables, staging, and of course some other ones here as well, like the actual project name that we're working with. But we can use variables here to make some of that stuff dynamic. So up here, I'm just gonna define some variables and the keyword for that is variable, nothing fancy there. So we have variable and then we can name it. So I'm gonna do infrastructure env, so for environment. And we can do a few things here. One, we can say the type. Now the default is string, but we can say string here just to be explicit. And then there's other types, of course. We'll get into that in a little bit. And we can give it a description, which can say, what is this variable for? In our case, it's the infrastructure environment. We could also give it a default value, but I'm not gonna do that for infrastructure environment. We can do that for some other ones though. For example, default region. Now, some of these are in quotes and some aren't. They don't actually have to be in quotes. I think they used to be, but now they don't anymore. Anyway, default region is another variable, type string, description, the region this infrastructure is in, and a default value of US East 2, because I happen to know everything's gonna be in US East 2, so I don't really want this to be dynamic necessarily. Although, this is just a default value, it can be overridden. One more variable here, instance size. So EC2 web server size, t3.small, also type string. So the instance size um, is another variable we're gonna introduce here just because we can, basically. And now we can actually use these variables. So let's go ahead and use them. Down here for environment, we can replace that with var dot infrastructure environment. Our AWS instance resource, we can replace this with an environment, var dot instance size. And for our tags down here, var dot infrastructure env. Now we've gone through and changed anything that was staging into uh, var infra env for environment tags here and for the AMI that we were looking for. But we see here, we also have the word staging in middle of a string. So how do we actually get this variable inside of a string? So the syntax for that looks like this, a dollar sign, curly brackets, and then the variable name itself. So this will do a uh, string interpolation. So Terraform will parse this variable inside of a string, specifically with double quotes, and output the string here as you would expect with the variable replaced with the value for this variable. So let's go ahead and search for the word staging anywhere else here. And we can see we can just go ahead and replace that as needed. And I think those are the only two places. So we can go ahead and see if we change anything. Okay, so let's do Terraform plan. And I'm not gonna pass it any flags. You can see here that we have a variable infrastructure env that has no default. And so it actually prompts us for that. Now, the other way we could do this is Terraform plan and pass it that variable. So var infra env equals staging. And since we pass that variable in, it doesn't prompt us for it. And it checks um, against the current state of things and tells us if there's anything to change. Now there isn't because staging is the um, same environment we currently used and we didn't change anything else. So I used the same instance size and all that stuff too. If I had this set to something else, then we would see that there'd be changes, right? Uh, for one, this is a, we have an error. The error here is that the AMI use is looking for an AMI built for production, but we only have one built for staging, so we got an error. And the other thing is that if we did not have that error, the tags would be changed for our resources that use the infrastructure environment. Now, the other thing we can do here, other than pass a variable in directly when we run Terraform plan or uh, answer the prompts when it prompts us, is to create a file. We can create a file that ends in .tfvars. Here, we're gonna create one named variables.tfvars. And in our variables.tfvars file, we can say infra env, infrastructure env equals staging in quotes here. And then we can do terraform plan var file equals, or no, we don't even need the equals. We can say variables.tfvars. Great, and we can see that, that it is working. It grabbed variables from our tfvars file. Now there's nothing to change here because we just kept using the same variables, but we could change things. For example, if we edited our variables file and added instance size, and if we made that a t3.x large, for example, then we could plan again. And we'll see that we have a different instance size. So it's gonna update the server with that and make a change. We don't need to destroy a server in this case. What Terraform is gonna do is stop the server make the change and restart the server because that's the process that is required to change an instance type for an EC2 server. So we can see how variables become very handy, right? We can change a variable on the fly in order to do things like segment by infrastructure environments, which is a super useful uh, thing to do in Terraform. 
Or we can, of course, do smaller things like, say, our web application servers are now t3.large instead of t3.small. Variables are a very, very important part of Terraform. They are a large part in how you organize Terraform later. So we're going to get into that when we start talking about Terraform modules in just a few videos.